There are six enemies. It looks like several different versions of Pokemon that probably wouldn't make very good tarot cards. Anyways, what's going on guys? This is Necrostevo. It's time for a battle video. And of course, if you stay tuned near the end, I will have an explanation as to my extended absence these past couple weeks. I'm actually using the Persona 4 team that my good friend and rival, who's now retired, Toshiro gave me. Uh, and again, we're gonna continue with some black and white Wi-Fi battle videos just because uh, the servers for DS games are gonna be shutting down here shortly. Jiraiya is gonna come out here. He's just gonna start off with the Choice Specs Focus Blast. Wigglytuff is so bulky that it's able to take it, which is just... Uh, I guess that's not surprising just because of how much HP Wigglytuff has, but geez, it took that... I was expecting that to just outright KO, but you know, at least I hit it. That's the main thing. Uh, my opponent sets up both screens, and also if you look at the bottom, that's my Persona 4 team. So you compare my Persona 4 team to, to what Toshiro has. See who has the better choices? Maybe I should mix match the Pokemon up. Of course, Toshiro's Pokemon represent the Personas, while my Pokemon represent the characters. So maybe there is some mixing and matching we could do there. But anyways though, Himiko, I ended up switching in right here just because I figured I could get it in and get the screens up and it would go down as I was putting up both screens. And so I put up light screen, which is going to cut the damage down from Shadow Ball. And it looks like I maybe would have lived another one, but I get critical hit. So I don't get a chance to put up Reflect, which is annoying. I would have loved dual screens up because now it's time to set up Nasty Plus with Sakuna. Um, it's really, really fun to bring in special Lucario in these situations because it just screams, hey, burn me, please, even though it's a nasty plotting Lucario. I don't really, if he gets burned, it's not going to matter too much to him. And so I know that my opponent has the screens up still, and he shows me the haze, and I was like, gosh darn it, I just wasted that time setting up plus four when I could have just hit him. I really thought that he was just going to attack me. But fortunately, he does just put Will-O-Wisp on me again instead of going for haze. And now that I know he has haze, I'm not going to get greedy. I just was waiting for the light screen to go down. Now I can hopefully finish him off with a Dark Pulse. Unfortunately, his Cofagrius barely lives that hit too, which means he gets to do a pretty decent little chunk to my Lucario in combination with having two turns of burn damage as opposed to one and the chip damage from a Shadow Ball. Fortunately that means that the light screen and the reflector are going to be gone when this Cofagrius is gone, which is nice. My Golurk appreciates the reflect being gone and of course Snorlax or Kentucky Doji, which is Teddy's persona, will appreciate that as well. Now I do have Vacuum Wave on Sakuna, or rather Toshiro put Vacuum Wave on Sakuna. But it's not going to do that much to Heracross. Didn't know what Heracross was going to go for. I would have loved to have Reflect up here. Because Scarf Moxie Heracross is pretty annoying. Uh, but he just goes for two Earthquakes. That's a three hit KO. Shadow Punch I know is not going to kill. But maybe I can put it in range for another KO. And once again, his Pokemon just barely living these hits. If only uh, there was a Persona that kind of used more traps or something like that. Then that would give me an excuse to use Stealth Rocks on a Persona. But figuring that I could save Golurk for later, maybe to switch in on a Scarf Close Combat or something like that. I'm going to switch in Kentucky here, and I know that he's going to switch out, and so I'm going to use this opportunity to try to paralyze something with a Body Slam. That's really all I wanted to do. I really just wanted to paralyze something. Take out a little bit of my rage from him constantly barely living my really, really powerful hips. Although, apparently not powerful enough. Now, for those of you who don't know, Kentucky Doji usually just carries a gigantic explosive and it explodes and this self, this Snorlax actually has self-destruct and I, I kind of get a little bit too happy about clicking the self-destruct button in this battle I managed to refrain from self-destructing all willy-nilly like I normally do I was very pleased with the damage from the Giga Drain but once again leaving my opponent in the red 
with yet another attack. Jiraiya, even with the specs, raising your special attack, it's just not cutting it. And that's kind of a Selgor's downfall. I have yet to see a Selgor at all in 6th gen, of course, but in 5th gen, he was at least around in RU just because of how fast he was and he could throw up spikes at the very least. Uh, Ninetales comes out, puts up the Drought, which is going to be a little bit annoying just because of those really, really powerful hits that are going to be coming off of that fire, stab, and being boosted by the sun. Unfortunately, his Ninetales, like my Lucario, also has Nasty Plot, which is going to be a problem just because of how hard this thing hits. Fortunately, it's hitting my defensive side. No way, unfortunately, because Snow Ice has much better special defense than physical defense. But that is not a problem because Kentoki Doji just has so much HP. I really wanted to self-destruct right there. Just saying. I did just go for the Body Sun because I knew a Body Sun would KO. Should have self-destructed though. Because uh, now his Heracross is going to be able to come in and finish me off and get a Moxie boost. And this is pretty important because I uh, don't really have anything for Scarf Heracross. I did save Golurk and I also saved my Sukuna who has the Vacuum Wave. Hopefully he's able to take out Heracross who resisted from that range of HP, and it is, probably just because it's a special attack as opposed to a physical attack. Although if I had physical, I would be in trouble because I'm burned. Now Glyscore comes in, I really just needed to put some damage on this thing because my final Pokemon is Izanagi, which is a Haxorus. I, I, uh, Haxorus is a physical attacker, Glyscore has very high physical defense, and um, yeah, not going to be able to uh, do much to him there. To um, kind of see what he has going on, I went out into Golurk there. I have Ice Punch in case he wants to be weird and try any shenanigans. And I actually get him to use up his acrobatics. Uh, flying Gym boosted. Man, I miss Flying Gym and 6th Gym. I miss the gym and the gym. And the gym and the gym. But anyways though, since he used that Flying Gym there, I know that he will not be able to one-hit KO me with acrobatics now. Uh, and I'm able to lift that quite nicely. We're going to go for Outrage. And plus two, Izanagi is going to be able to finish off Glyscore, which is fantastic, because that means all he has left is Quillfish, whom, even without the Paralysis, I definitely outspeed. He does get the minus one from the Intimidate, but that means I'm just at plus one instead of plus two. And I'm able to clinch the battle barely with Izanagi in the very, very end there. So hope you all enjoyed that battle. That was a really fun match that I just never really got a chance to post. And just big shout outs to Toshiro because uh, I, he just helped me out a lot just in, as far as team testing or breeding things and just being a part of the community really. I don't even know if he will even watch this video, but uh, I appreciate being able to use his team. So where the hell has Necrostevo been for basically the last month? Uh, long story short, I now work four part-time jobs and still, of course, in the process of applying on new positions, both legal, management-oriented, retail-oriented. I'm even looking at some positions for engineering and production facilities. Just trying to find some one full-time job instead of working all these multiple part-time jobs. That's not to say I, I'm actually enjoying aspects of all the jobs that I do. I serve and wait tables at two different places, I do pro bono work, and I also teach. So each one of those kind of is a, a, it helps make up the Captain Planet that is me enjoying my jobs. But with all that, I, I you know, I'm just looking for that, that 9 to 5 instead of that 7 until 1 the next morning type gig. That being said, I'm also in a uh, transitory period in my life. I, I will probably be moving out in a little while here and uh, just finding a new place and making sure I'm making enough to cover the rent and the bills and the being an adult. All that is happening and it's just all kind of wiggly, wobbly, timey, wimey, transitory stuff, uh, as I'm sure the doctor might say. Now, what does this mean for the channel? Uh, th 
I really just got a little bit burnt out on Pokemon after the April Friendly. Um, between having eh, basically 15 to 16 hour shifts, and then I came home and I would pay, play 20 Pokemon battles in a row. I burnt myself out on Pokemon, and I was really annoyed about work, so I ended up taking a little miniature break from Pokemon, played a lot of Animal Crossing. But as you can see, I'm still here uploading, and I actually had a new series in mind that I wanted to start, but when I tried to start that, shoutouts to Crystal for her idea in making the series, which was a Pokemon retrospective. I tried to start it, and all I did was get a copyright strike on my channel because they wanted to claim one of the images that I used in the video. So I need to retool that idea because I still really want to do it. Uh, just looking back at each Pokemon type, how they have been through each generation, and where they are now, where they used to be. Just a fun idea. It's, it's good to look back. It makes you appreciate where you are now. And uh, I enjoyed that idea. I just have to figure out a way to do it where I don't have copyright strikes on my channel. But the battles will continue to come. I will be entering the May International Challenge League starting tomorrow or today, whenever this video goes up. Uh, it's actually the... It starts on May the 16th and goes through the 19th, I believe. But... Um, depending on how that goes, I will definitely have a team deconstruction video where I talk about the team I use because the team that I decided to use is pretty weird. We, of course, have on that team, I use Aromatis, mainly as a Trick Room user, Pyroar, Mega Gengar, Escavalier, Gigalith, and, Gug and Gudra, excuse me. So that is a little bit of a weird team, but my tests on Showdown have proven to be pretty fun. So... Look forward to that. Look forward to a, a couple of VGC battles. And of course, I will keep the uploads coming your way no matter how crazy my uh, life gets. This channel is not going anywhere. Even if I have to take a break from time to time, I, I, I like this channel way too much. So, I have dragged on long enough, darn it. I hope you all have enjoyed this battle video. Good luck in the ICL if you are participating this weekend. And... And that's it. Alright, I got nothing. Alright, bye now.